If I could not get sick for like three weeks in a row, that would be really awesome. <laughs> Welcome back to the Scale Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. It's episode 19 of What's on the Bench Weekly. And if you are not familiar with this show, it's where I, Matthew from the Scale Builders Guild, take you through some of the projects I have on the go. Stuff that's on the bench, for example. This week is no different. We've got excellent stuff on the bench this week. This is a special week, not just because I'm finally over this cold again. It's a special week because parts of the show dog collection that I have purchased have started to arrive and I've had some time to go over them and now it's time to share them with you. And first, this week, we're gonna take a look at the Blazing Blazer. Here it is. This is a very old vintage Tamiya RC and uh, has a lot of history in it. This one is in pretty decent condition considering its age and also considering that it's mostly not finished. An unpainted blazing blazer body with most of the pieces intact? This is a pretty special find. And if you are not familiar with Showdog, Showdog spent a lot of time on the Tamiya Club forums. Uh, very prolific builder, very prolific customizer, has a lot of amazing builds. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away uh, unexpectedly a few uh, months ago. His son is responsible now for the collection and uh, helping thin it out a little bit. Uh, through Ampro Engineering, I was able to pick up four separate vehicles, this being one of them. And we'll get to the other ones as we kind of get through the collection and you know, finish one part and go on to the next. But the idea here is to pay tribute to Showdog's collection, uh, not sell these again. These are going to be a permanent fixture here in the collection here at the Scale Builders Guild and restore them as best I can. Um, hopefully get them to a running state, make some videos of them actually out there running because what a shame it would be for these to just live on a shelf. Anyway, a uh, little more detail here. This is a mostly complete uh, blazing blazer. Underneath, uh, there's some pretty spectacularly old stuff going on, but this was a pretty unique truck for its time. Uh, Multi-speed transmission, locking and unlocking diffs, lockers, like actual functioning lockers uh, on the front wheels, which is pretty incredible. And a really great, nicely detailed styrene Chevrolet body uh, with really cool wing. Uh, there are a lot of different uh, iterations of this truck in real life. Uh, I've seen ones with the Olympia Beer uh, Corporation. Uh, Show Dog obviously wanted to do a Coors theme for this one, which I'm sure would absolutely um, make some uh, Tamiya purists heads explode. You know, that's always fun though. Maybe we could do that. Uh, he had already laid out some graphics here that he taped on and then never did anything with. These were all traced out on tracing paper. Nice little bits of history there for sure. The body itself is in reasonably good condition for its age. Uh, there is a pretty heavy duty crack right along the hood. And you know what? Let's take that off. Oops, let's take all of it off. <laughs> There's the, the roof line. That's the roof piece. Uh, I do have both sides of that. Uh, it's just been glued on with some very questionable glue. I don't know what that is, but it's not styrene glue and thank goodness for that. Uh, some bits mi missing here out of the, uh, the bottom portion of this lip. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of repairing that we're going to have to do along the way. Um, I do also have a metal cage for this on the way and a whole metal replacement piece for this. Um, so we may end up going with that. Good old JIS hardware throughout, uh, which is always a nightmare to work with. Really poorly painted man. That's embarrassingly bad. I have a feeling this was not Show Dog's original truck. I'm pretty sure he picked it up from someone else along the way. Uh, but let's get this body off here and we'll take a look at some of the things that, uh, aside from all the dust, uh, this hood is pretty badly cracked. So there's going to be uh, some replacement filler uh, and, uh, and styrene glue there. Dashboard appears to all be good. It's missing the shifter elements there. So we're probably going to have to find those somewhere. But otherwise, it's pretty clean. Some 
again, questionable paint choices being made here. Obviously this was bought and then built and then never finished uh, because there's, there's no evidence of paint anywhere. You can see where someone tried to repair this body uh, by melting it maybe? I don't know. And then again, the <laughs> some huge gobs of hot glue were glued into this portion of the, the grill to keep it in place. I don't think it needs to be like that, but we'll see. Uh, you know, this is the good old days because this one, let's see if we can zoom in on that, made in Japan. This is the real deal, folks. This is how uh, they came back in the day. Now let's zoom back out and get a good look at this chassis, which I think you will be pretty surprised by. So here it is uh, in all of its glory. Um, there's a lot of original stuff here. The original chassis was just aluminum, uh, like, was just aluminum stock. It wasn't C-channel rails or anything. And this is pretty much as it came. There's a lot of old vintage electronics in there. Some Futaba uh, servos from a billion years ago, uh, along with what appears to be a large uh, Futaba receiver. Uh, no ESC to speak of, but we've got the old gigantic power switch there. RC, what does this say here? RC activated four wheel drive. So that means there is an actual gearbox in here that was controlled by a servo. Um, and uh, <laughs> it's mostly looks like it's complete. There's a lot of stuff missing here um, that will require us to uh, do some searching on eBay to get this all back up and running. But leaf sprung suspension, uh, no shocks in the rear, but it's definitely got some aftermarket shocks up front. Pretty sure it did not come with a coil and a regular everyday shock. One's original, one is definitely not. And uh, it's seized pretty badly, so there's no suspension travel there whatsoever. Hey, look, it's the steering mechanism from a Trail Finder 3. <laughs> the longest ever rod with a bell crank system for steering. Um, it's nice to know that some things haven't changed. <laughs> this is going to require an awful lot of work uh, to get into uh, any sort of running state. Um, man, these giant clips on the back here to open up this uh, enormous electronics tray. This probably hasn't been opened in 20 years. Don't breathe in that air, we'll all die. Pretty crappy old plastic servos. Look at that. Do people even use these, this style anymore? Absolutely not. Um, so yeah, uh, this is this is the basic state of it here. Four channel receiver, wow, this must have cost a fortune back then. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is the state of everything. Uh, it's gonna require a lot of going through manuals. Wow, I think that might actually be the original switch. Look at that monster. Wow, it isn't, you know, for its age, it's in relatively good shape. Uh, the axles spin nice and freely. Um, the transmission looks like it functions as well. Yeah, nice and smooth on that action as well. Um, all the drive shafts are intact. Everything looks like it's been Nicely taken care of. This is the one thing about all these old Tamiya uh, gearboxes that drove me crazy is that you had to apply the silicone to seal everything because this was pot metal. And by no means was the casting or the machining nearly as good as it is today. So you had to do all of your own sealing of all of these gaskets in order to make sure grease just didn't plop out <laughs> all over the trail as you were driving along. So. This was how it was supposed to be done. It never looks very clean though. I'd really like to just strip this whole thing down and clean it up uh, and you know maybe even use some tape uh, to apply silicone so it was in a nice uniform pattern. That's the kind of attention to detail that I'm really looking to do with this truck. I think it deserves it. This is old AF and if we can get it to a showroom quality and then take it outside and wreck it. <laughs> that's, that's what I'd like to do. But I'm pretty confident we'll be able to find everything we need to get this back to uh, a finished state. 
interestingly enough, whoever owned this before Shodog, and I'm pretty sure Shodog would not have let this happen, uh, they locked out the, they locked out the transmission here using a pinion, uh, so it would not use any of the shifting functions. They just kind of locked it in a position and said, "That's it. I don't care anymore. This is how it's going to stay." <laughs> we're not going to do that. We're going to get it back to its functional state. So first things first, we're going to have to find a good manual that I can print out using all of my color laser printer ink. Because uh, I do want to actually have it out on the bench and, you know, working on it that way. I think that's sort of key to this whole process. Uh, but yeah, we're going to get uh, get this back up and running and make it uh, make it a good looking, make it a good looking functional RC again. Uh, because this vintage stuff has its place, right? It means something. It's got history. You gotta understand where your, where your roots are from and how you got from point A to point B. And, uh, I for one am very excited about the prospects. It doesn't look very good right now, I'll, I'll admit, but we're gonna get it showroom ready. There will be more, uh, in this show dog series. Uh, we've got, uh, the Porsche uh, 959. It's right over there. I can't remember what it, I can't remember which model it is. Yeah, we got the Porsche 959 as well as a uh, Rough Rider as well. Um, they are they're both uh, classics as far as I'm concerned, and uh, they both look really great. The Rough Rider is basically ready to go. It just needs electronics, so that'll be a fun one to show off as well. Uh, if you are enjoying this series, what's on the bench weekly? and you like what you see, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. By now, I'm sure you've caught my Capra UTB-18 running video. A lot of people responded quite positively about how that video was just live, kind of running, real-time speed, with my commentary in situ as it was happening. I had a really fun time doing that, and I will definitely consider doing more running videos like that. Here it is on the bench. I went from the 4.19 Hyrax. Uh, I love this combo. I, this is one of my favorite combos ever. Uh, but I decided to go with the smaller 3.85 Crawlers. Uh, still a 1.9 tire, so they've got a big heavy duty rim there. I went with some uh, plastic axial race line bead locks that I had from, cannot tell you what, maybe the Capra actually, uh, and went with uh, this smaller size tire, which I think actually makes this look even better now. Performance wise, uh, much softer foams as well. That'll help significantly. And um, can't wait to get this out again and see how it does. Nice little truck though. I'm actually fairly impressed with this. Also this week, I ordered a ton of upgrade parts for the TRX4M. Uh, this is the TRX4M Defender 118th scale rock crawler trail truck, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm super impressed with this platform and I think there's a lot of potential here. Uh, I hope to, in the coming weeks, uh, get a bunch of those upgrades in and we're going to put those all on the Bronco. So we're going to leave the Defender stock, we're going to upgrade the Bronco and see how far we can take that truck. Uh, already planned low range gearbox, 100% that has to go in first. I'm really interested to see how much lower that gearing will go. They did a really great job with these. And for those of you who really enjoy watching me fumble through builds live, I'll be putting together the Kyosho Optima Mid Kit live this coming Sunday. Uh, we'll probably start around 11 a.m. or so to give our European friends an opportunity to catch a live stream. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. This is one of my favorite kits of all time, uh, and I haven't had one since I was 17, and it was old then. So uh, this will be really great. I'm really looking forward to it. So I hope you'll tune in for that. I'll be sure to put a notification or a, you know, a thingy so you know when it's coming. That'll be Sunday, November 13th, 2022. And if you're watching this many years into the future, just search all my videos for the Optima Mid. You'll find that build. Very excited about this. My thanks to Kyosho for sending this to me. Do you have a great resource for old Tamiya junk beyond eBay? Put a comment down below. You know I love reading through your feedback and I try to answer as many of them as I can. And I do need help with this. So if you've got a line on Blazing Blazer parts, remember to put a comment down there. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we'll see you again next week.